Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. We are not obviously at my house, we are at my mom's house. Good morning everybody and it's early. Yes it is. This is our annual Thanksgiving meal prep. We've got what, 13 recipes or 12, a lot of recipes we are gonna be making today in preparation for our Thanksgiving tomorrow. My mom did a few things this morning before I got here to kind of prep for today. She got a bunch of the goodies out. We went shopping if you missed it together. About three or four days ago, I shopped my garden, my pantry. These are the onions and potatoes we grew in the garden. And then, oh, and the carrots. And I also brought over some pumpkin and my mom roasted that up over the last couple days so we didn't have to do that today. And I did not let her know that when you roast homegrown pumpkins, you need to strain out some of the liquid. This is pretty liquidy. Well, I've made pumpkin pie with squash type you know, butternut and it's dry, but this, and you don't have to do that. Yeah. You just, you know, uh, blend it. But this is stringy. It kind of actually looks like, well, before it got mashed up in the bag, it looked like spaghetti squash. It was actually stringy. Well, it'll, and it'll, liquid. it'll um, process up really nicely oh, once we strain it. So I was gonna show my mom how to go ahead and strain it. So she roasted it up and she took the pulp out. There's so much liquid that I'm actually going to Drain it first in the sink because the bowl is almost at the, the strainer is almost at the bottom of the bowl. So what I typically do when I roast my pumpkin is I will put it in a strainer, let it strain a little bit and then pop it in the refrigerator and let it strain overnight. But we'll, we'll be able to get that to a great consistency in no time. Another thing my mom did to get prepared for today is she kind of made a game plan of what order we're gonna cook things in so we can be as efficient as possible. And she's gonna tape it up on the wall. This is the one. Yes, but I, yeah. I guess I don't need tomorrow's day. It goes on to tomorrow, but I don't need that on here right now. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually get the pumpkin pie started. Once our pumpkin strains a little bit, we're gonna get the turkey brining, and then we are gonna start with the mashed potatoes. I'm gonna start by peeling the potatoes because I do want that pumpkin to strain just a little bit. And so that's what I'm gonna get going on. This um, is my mom's trick. I'm gonna put this paper bag, I'm gonna open it up and put it in the bottom of my sink. Now I do have a garbage disposal, but our house is on a hill and our drain sewer line goes down the hill and makes a 90 degree angle. And I don't want all these potatoes skins to get stuck at the bottom of the elbow. That would be a really expensive <laughs> fix. So we are gonna put the potato skins in the garbage, but to make it easy, we'll peel into the sink on a paper bag. We have 24 people coming, I think, right? Uh, yes, 24, 24 spaces to our high chairs. Ah, other trick. Take the garbage out from underneath the sink, out of the cupboard, so that we aren't opening the door, cupboard door, a million times and getting it all dirty. So here's the paper bag. I'm just gonna peel right onto the paper bag and then we can take this out. I do need to wash these potatoes, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and peel them real quick and then we'll give them a really good scrub once they're all peeled. The potatoes are lovely. It was so fun to harvest them. Okay, you helped harvest these potatoes. About half of these recipes are brand new recipes to us this year. A lot of them are just different versions of what we've already made before, like the green bean casserole. Obviously we've made green bean casserole before, but we found a new recipe we wanted to try this year. This year it has Gruyere cheese in it, which <laughs> sounds delicious. And so I'll link all the recipes down below. Some of them are tried and true that we make every year, like my grandma's stuffing, and it wouldn't be Thanksgiving without my grandma's stuffing. And then one thing my mom did this morning as well is I brought over some pie crust that I had made that I had in the freezer. And this morning she went ahead and popped those pie crust in the refrigerator so that we'll be able to roll those out here. As soon as I get these potatoes boiling, we will make the pumpkin pies. Are you preheating the oven, mom? I am. Perfect. And I'm checking to see if all the pies are at the same temperature. So we're making a- They are not. I'll do heat both ovens. I think we're making two pumpkin pies, the same recipe and yes. a pecan pie. The pecan Pecan pie is brand new to us. It's not actually a pie, it's a tart. 
And then we're gonna do something fun this year. We are going to brine one turkey. We had to get two turkeys because they only had small ones at the store. So what that does is that allowed us to, we're gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison. We found a turkey brine at Costco when we were shopping. So we thought we would brine one bird, just roast the other bird, and we will be able to see if there's one that we think is better or not. My mom has brined birds before and not brined them. And so it's gonna be fun to actually have them side by side to test. Mom, do you happen to have another strainer at all or? I do have a wire one. That I could put the peeled potatoes in? Sure. I could start rinsing them as I go. It's not very big. That's okay. That's yeah. what I have. <laughs> That's okay. That's what I have. No worries. We'll use what we got over here. Do you want a, a bowl to put them in or the pan and we'll just rinse them in the pan in the pot and dump it out? Yeah. yeah, that would work. Okay. We'll set this right here and then you don't have to reach up. Thank you. Oh, treasures. <laughs> oh, we could use we could use this. Sure, whatever you want to do. We'll use this. Okay. Perfect. Thanks. What my mom is doing right now as I'm peeling these potatoes is she is taping up all of the recipes we're gonna be making up on her cabinets. And that's just one trick that we have found that especially when we're doing so many recipes, we're not shuffling through a pile of recipes. We are having dinner at noon because there's quite a few kids coming and so that's gonna work around kids' naps and things like that better this year. And so we don't actually have to make any appetizers this year. I think this is the first Thanksgiving we're not making any appetizers. Correct, but realistically, I'm planning 12.30. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm planning well, to serve 12.30. People okay. are to arrive at noon. And then we will be decorating my mom's Christmas tree, which is a new tradition we've never done before, where after dinner, we are gonna eat dessert while we decorate the Christmas tree. Uh, one of our daughters that moved out of town started that by decorating my Christmas tree before she was married, but living on her own and didn't really have a Christmas tree. So she would come and decorate, and then when they got married, they would decorate it, but now they moved. Yeah. So Mark and I have been having to do it all by <laughs> ourselves. So we're gonna so do I'm it. So I'm really glad to have help this year. Yeah. Got some tall son-in-laws to do the top. Yeah. I am really excited about the corn casserole. Oh, I yeah. grew up having corn casserole frequently for fancy events. My grandma used to make it. So. In the middle of me peeling, I'm gonna go ahead and strain my pumpkin one more time. You can see this liquid. That's just gonna go down the drain and we'll let this keep straining while I keep peeling potatoes. So shall I start the, oh, I, we have to candy pecans. Oh, yeah. We didn't find any at the store that were already um, spiced. So let me find a recipe for that. Okay. So are we gonna bake the corn souffle today or are we gonna bake it tomorrow? Um, bake it today and then just reheat it? I think so. Okay. My dad is off to the store because there's a couple things we forgot when we went shopping. I'm Always. going to, <laughs> yeah. Get this, I kind of ran the, I shouldn't have run the water, but now we can go ahead and compost this whole thing. When it comes to the holidays, there are definitely recipes that are family traditions and family favorites, like these mashed potatoes and my grandma stuffing. But when it comes to the, some of the other sides, my mom and I like to get a little creative. So we're also gonna make a honey chipotle carrot side with a cheese sauce that's gonna be on the bottom of it that turns out to be phenomenal. Plus we're gonna try a pecan tart that we've never made before along with some bread in the shape of a turkey. You will see whether that turns out or not. And a salad made with Brussels sprouts. My mom and I created a hosting course all on the tips and tricks and ins and outs of hosting events. And if you're interested in that, to learn how to do this type of thing stress-free, whether it's like today where we've got a party of 24 or you have a party of two, 
I'm going to link that down below for you if that is something you are interested in. The recipe for our pecan tart calls for spiced uh, pecans, and we didn't find any at the store. So we're going to make some. It's pretty easy. I've done it several times before. Um, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to start with an egg white and a tablespoon of water. Here's our water. We're going to froth it up. Then we're going to add vanilla. Cinnamon, and this is Penzi's cinnamon, but I've just recycled a different brand of spice in the jar. This is Redmond Real Salt, and it's very good. I really like it. Then we're gonna add the sugar. While my mom's grabbing the sugar, I'm gonna go ahead and fill the potatoes up with water, and we're gonna get these on the stove, and now we officially have the potatoes going. One of the ingredients we need for the pecan tart and then I think I'm gonna get going on, do you want me to do the green bean casserole next, Mom? Sure. Okay, we'll do the green bean casserole next because we're gonna let that pumpkin drain just a little bit longer. So that's one cup of sugar. Before I get going on the green bean casserole, I'm gonna go ahead and strain my pumpkin one more time. Sure smells good. Do you want to put all these in there? Yes, I do. Thank you. You're welcome. You can also take a rubber spatula and push out any extra liquid as well, but we're getting pretty close to the consistency we want. It does look really good. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get going on the green bean casserole then next. We're gonna spread this out to a single layer as best we can. It's really sticky. It's going to kind of be like um, candy. Yeah, what do you call that? Uh, pecan brittle, like peanut brittle. But we do need to get them individual because that's the uh, garnish on the top is you do a row of pecans around the outside edge of the tart. My mom just got the pecans in the oven to candy, and we need to blanch the green beans first because we're using fresh green beans, so I'm gonna get some water on to boil there. New plan. Looking at it like this, I think it will be brittle. I'm going to separate them individually on another uh, baking uh, mat, and then they'll be separate. That's a good idea. I think idea. that'll work better. Yeah. It'll be prettier, individual ones on the top of the tart. While she's doing that, I am going to just take the tops off the green beans here We'll get them washed so that we can get them into our water. So I'm glad I got the water going while I'm doing this so that hopefully by the time I'm done doing this, then the water will be, will be ready and we can go ahead and blanch our green beans. Do you think we want to leave them whole or do you want to oh. maybe chop them a bit do you want because it's easier on your plate? Like that? Yeah, I or think smaller? so. I, I think it's easier on your plate when at Thanksgiving you're going to have a little sample of everything. Yeah, that's and, a good idea. And that way you can have a sample of green beans and it's not going to take up a big space on your plate. You need space for all the things. That's right. So is this a good size, do you think? I think so. So in thirds, about in thirds? Yeah, I think so. Are you okay if I break them or do you want me to cut oh, them? Oh, breaking them is fine. Okay. We're going to chew them up. It doesn't matter. <laughs> This is a sticky mess. And it's, but it smells great. It does. That it smells, smells really like good. a holiday, doesn't it? I think this dessert that we're making, my sister found it and she asked us to make it, is probably one of the most complicated ones we're going to be making today. Yes. Well, she has always wanted a, pump, a, pecan. a pecan pie uh, for Thanksgiving, and really less than half of it gets eaten. And so it goes in the freezer. I'll eat a pecan tart. And then it goes back out for Christmas. Yeah. So this way she wanted to try something different. Probably, we. well, we might with 20, would you say 24 people coming? Uh, I'd have to look again, but yes, because. Uh, say we might go through two pumpkin pies. Yes, we might. Because we've done that before too for a little bit of prep is we'll make extra pies at Thanksgiving, because you can freeze cooked pumpkin pies really easily. 
and then we will pull them out at Christmas. So it's one less thing we have to make at Christmas. We don't do this meal at Christmas, a turkey. We do prime rib and a ham. And I'll get the Traeger out again for the ham. The ham is so good in the Traeger. Yep, it just it adds good. a depth to the flavor of it. See, they're separated. I think that will be much easier to decorate with. Yes. My dad just got back with what we needed. We forgot a can of cream corn. And then when we bought the Jiffy Mix, we on accident bought honey Jiffy Mix. And we needed just plain. And then we did need one egg carton because my chickens aren't laying quite enough. We have one dozen from my girls, but we need a few more. So my dad just picked up a couple more eggs. So these crusts are still a little bit, well, you know, you're right. They probably, they're still frozen. Yeah, frozen. We'll just leave them on the counter for a bit. Move my on. mom was going to go ahead and start the pies, rolling the pies out, but I think she's going to do something else. Uh, yes, I will get ready to do the dressing. I'll oh, do that's the a chopping for the dressing. Well, you don't need to do any chopping because I, I decided to buy, bring some pre-chopped onions and celery. Yeah. Oh, good. The only thing you need to chop is the herbs. Okay. But we could get the sausage going. I brought onions that I pre-chopped earlier, and then I brought celery from the garden, and those have already been chopped. They're both frozen, so we won't have to chop or wash or do anything with that. We can just get those cooking. Okay, you brought more celery. Mm -hmm. And onions. Yeah, onions are in the freezer. Do you want more celery than that? Because this is the one I brought today. Uh, there's another one. I guess it's probably still in the freezer. I'm going to get going on chopping a few herbs over here while my for the stuffing while my mom is working on making the stuffing. gonna have to tell me is that enough of the savory herbs um i actually probably would do more because this didn't come with a seasoning pack okay mom does this look like a better amount yes i think so okay i'm gonna get this washed and we'll get it in here or actually we probably should saute it huh yes i would do that I got the green beans washed so as soon as our waters come up to a boil, we can blanch it. And then we've got some corn here sitting in some water for the corn souffle. Do we need, we don't need garlic, do we, Mom, for the stuffing? I don't think so. Okay. Oh, yeah, Mom, your knives are nice and sharp. Hmm? Your knives are nice and sharp. Yes, Costco came in, uh, not Costco, Cutco came and did them for free, obviously. I love the smell of turkey dressing. It just smells of the holidays. Yeah, sage. I'll chop up parsley next. Yeah, you have parsley in here too. Have you checked the potatoes recently? Nope. Is it boiling? Oh, it's perfect. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Nope, rock hard. Rock hard. Those will probably take a good 45 minutes, I would think. Yes. You want to saute the parsley too, Mom? Yes. Okay. Let Does this see. look like enough parsley I for you? I thought I had another giant pan. Is that your well, nuts? Yes. Well, I want to get the, um, the turkey brining so it brines for 24 hours. Okay. Now these are separate and not all stuck together. I can spread them out easily. Smells delicious. Doesn't it? Is this enough parsley, do you think, Mom? Just a second here. I got my head in the oven. <laughs> all right, I have to set the timer for 15 more minutes. Over here. Thank you. Does this look like enough? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, 
Our water's boiling for the green beans. Oh, you know what I think I could do? No, that doesn't fit. We need to blanch these for three minutes. There is a pan that one fits in, and I'm going to get it out. Do you think that's browned? Uh, actually, it's looking really good now. Last time I looked at it, it wasn't very browned. Here. Oh, that's got sugar on it. Oh, oops. I thought that was... <laughs> oops. Okay. That's why it goes over here for I'm the... Sorry. That's all right. No problem. So our sausage is looking nice and brown, so we can add our celery that's frozen from the garden. We're going to let that thaw and cook in with the sausage along with, along with quite a few onions from the garden that are frozen that we don't even have to chop. So... We'll let those cook down together. This celery is beautiful green. Thank you. I'm gonna run this under cold water so it stops the cooking process. So now we can just set these aside till we're ready to finish that recipe. So these are now thaw enough that I can roll them out and then we can get the pies in the oven because those are gonna take at least 45 minutes to bake. So we'll get those going. Thanks, Mom. It's gonna make noise, that's okay. Do you want a sip cup too? Sure. Since we don't have the actual filling of these pies done yet. I'll roll them out, I'll get them in the pie, pie pan and then I'll just pop them back in the fridge so the pastry stays nice and cold. Mom, I think the pumpkin is perfect. Good. Or, um, I don't, where to, oh, it's over there. If you want, you can run it in with an immersion blender. I've got one. Yeah, and then it will, or your, uh, your blender, and that way it'll be nice and smooth. One of my favorite time-saving hacks is having homemade pie pastry in my freezer, so that especially on a day like today where we are making an entire feast, it's one less thing that we don't have to make if we want to have it homemade. We just had to let it thaw in the refrigerator for a few hours. When we were making the five holiday Thanksgiving pies with a twist, I had went ahead and made a few extra pie pastries knowing we would need them on this day, threw them in the freezer, and now they're coming in handy. My mom has one kind of shallow pie pan and one little bit deeper dish. So I use the pastry to kind of build up the lip so that we can get a little bit more pie filling in this pie pan. So I'm gonna pop this in the refrigerator until we're ready to fill it so that the pastry stays nice and cold. My mom wants to get the brine on for the turkey because you have to have the brine cool before you can even put the turkey into it. So we found this at Costco and we've got some water on to boil and you're gonna dissolve all that salt and there's probably sugar and spices and everything. Oh, smell it. Oh yeah. You can't that's... smell it on the camera. <laughs> mm, oh wow. Doesn't that smell wonderful? That smells fantastic. This is what's in it. Uh, salt, sugar, cranberry, vanilla, allspice, apples, black pepper, garlic, orange peel, rosemary, thyme, bay leaf, and sage. Oh wow, yummy. Oh, that smells wonderful. This is looking really beautiful too.
The celery is so cute. They're just <laughs> cute little pieces and they're such bright green. Yeah, they didn't grow very big, but. Well, I like celery chopped. Me too, small. So, yes. Me too. And I, the color is just amazing. Did you say the potatoes are done? Yes, I was getting ready to strain them and then I got distracted. I like your idea of grinding a whole bunch <laughs> at one time. A pepper? Yes, when you have to do a lot. Okay, I'm gonna dump this in. Doesn't that look beautiful? Yeah. The color beautiful. is. Because, you know, dressing can be kind of uh, monotone. <laughs> and, you know, half of eating is what it looks like. And I think this is beautiful with the green. And I'll put the broth in and that will continue to cool it off. Well, my mom's finishing the stuffing. I'm gonna get going on these potatoes so that we can get the ingredients in here and it'll be easier to incorporate the butter and cream cheese while the potatoes are still hot. So I don't really have a recipe here. We're just gonna add things, taste, and adjust. My mom is adding two eggs to the stuffing and then she's gonna taste it for salt and pepper. And that is the stuffing. So here I've got butter, cream, cheese, garlic. This is roasted garlic powder. Roasted onion powder, a good amount of sour cream, and some cream. So we'll start with that. Mm. Is the stuffing good? Very good. We need to salt and pepper this too. One thing I did yesterday to streamline today that would be on my um, countdown uh, sheet is I determined what serving pieces I needed for the sides. So when we're like finishing the stuffing, I have a serving piece here that has a post to note that says, stuffing so that it's not a mad scramble at the end to find everything um it's just that's a quick quick tip well you can fill the stuffing oh yes that's what i have to do <laughs> <laughs> and this is your pan right yeah that's my pan you know what do you know what that means mom we officially have our first recipe done <laughs> stuffing is one of those great side dishes you can make the day before along with all these other ones I guess we're making today. Mashed potatoes is another one. You can reheat stuffing in a crock pot or in the oven. We're gonna reheat our potatoes in the crock pot to, if you need more space in your oven for other things. I'm gonna have these potatoes be a little bit on the more creamy side just because they're gonna be reheated in the crock pot than I would if I was gonna serve them for dinner. The corn dish also says we can do it in a crock pot. Oh, I so didn't know that. So if we're, as we're putting it all together and it looks like we're not going to have space in the oven, we can just do that one. I could bring my crock, in the pot. crock pot. If Do you oh, have no, two crock pots? No, we want to cook it. Oh, I have three crock oh. pots. <laughs> I only have one crock pot. Um, <clears throat> I think we need to do it in a dish because we're going to bake it today. Yeah, that's true. I think I'm gonna taste these potatoes. That brine is boiling on the stove and it smells incredible. Oh, you should see it. The apples have puffed up. That needs it, some more stuff. Wow, look at that. Look at this. The apples have uh, reconstituted, the cranberries, the allspice, everything is just big and fragrant. My mom's gonna put the brine outside so it cools faster. It is cold today. And these potatoes need quite a few more seasonings. <laughs> I thought about setting it on my table out there, and then I thought against it, it might crack it. Oh, it's probably not it's too tempered. Hot. Yes, yeah. it's probably not tempered, so it's just down on the ground. But it's got a lid on it. I think you could probably check off the 
potatoes too, because I'm basically done with them. All right. My mom's checking the things off the list we've already done. Great sense of accomplishment. <laughs> we potatoes. still have the two vegetable, three vegetable dishes Dressing. we need to make. Okay, I think I'll start cutting the, um, oh no, pumpkin. Needs more salt. Yeah. We should get the pies in the oven. Yes. My mom's gonna run the pumpkin through the immersion blender. Oh yeah, come over here. Oh, I could just move it in. I didn't like it hanging over the side. Oh yeah, that would be tragic, <laughs> wouldn't it? It would be. <laughs> it would be a mess. Yeah, it would be a mess. Not the first, but. Is this enough pumpkin for two pies, you think? Oh, oh yeah. probably by the yeah. time they put the milk and everything yeah. in it. I might have white pepper if you want to put more pepper in it. Hopefully these all fit. Um, would you be willing to grab a um, spatula? Yeah. Yep, I just wanted to make sure that wasn't going to flip out. That's hot. Do you need a pot holder? No, I think I can. I think Oops, I can it's got to be over the pan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Minor detail. Okay, let's regroup. Okay. So Here. I can see. I can do it now on. that it's not so cold. Okay. Good thing we didn't make any more potatoes because they wouldn't have fit. Yeah. Like pumpkin puree you would buy yes is morning. that good enough you think yeah yeah it's great i was trying to make sure there was no more strings that looks pretty good yeah second dish completely done we are finally ready to make the pie my mom just took the pecans out of the oven and i just googled how many cups of pureed pumpkin is in one 15 ounce can and it is 1.875 so I'm going to kind of guesstimate that. Aren't to, they lovely? Oh yeah, those are beautiful. To just a little under two cups. And this pumpkin puree turned out perfect after strained and blended. Pumpkin pie, it's okay if it's not exact, exact. Okay, so we've got our pumpkin there. Now we need to add, I think I need this bigger bowl. Mom, do you have a Ziploc bag we could put this pumpkin in yes. and freeze? Um, I do you want this size or probably a gallon size. Okay, it's not a freezer bag. That's okay. We'll just have to use it soon. Yeah. So now we have some pump prep prepped pumpkin for Is that enough for two pies in that one bowl? Yep. I, oh wow. One can is one point eight seven five. Okay, that's cups. three quarters. Yeah. One and that's three what I guess we needed. So if you this is how I like to freeze it so it freezes our thaws fast. I did that with my marinara sauce that I did. Oh, that's a good idea. And we ate it last night on... Um, From the garden? Yes. Nice. And we had it on chicken parmesan Ooh. that I was inspired by watching your video <laughs> when I was working out. Oh, I can make that. Yeah, chicken parmesan. So I made like uh, six breasts and put them in the freezer. Did you so. actually fry the chicken? Oh, yes, I did it. Wow, good for you, Mom. <laughs> and I put them in the freezer, so all I had to do is take it out and then I had the So you made a freezer sauce. meal too? I made three. We ate it once and I made two more freezer meals. Look at that, Mom. So, yes, that's I amazing. do freezer I do freezer meals a lot. That's amazing. <clears throat> but that's how I did my sauce in it. And when you take it out of the freezer and you want to use it right away, you just like bend it and crack it because it's thin. That's awesome. And you open the bag, turn it upside down, and it goes in your pan. It doesn't make a big mess. That's amazing. Yes, I thought that was a, a really good way to do it. Nathan said they like to make chicken parmesan with the chickens you bought. The yes. Ch that fried chicken you bought for the from birthday Costco. party. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would work. All okay. right, so now we can finish this. I love these. I bought them at Costco, and then I bought them for all my girls, my daughters and my daughter-in-law. Um, but they're hard to clean because they get really greasy. But if you put them in your dishwasher and give yourself an empty spot between them oh that's a great idea like this then the water whoops gotta put it even then the water comes up oh, yeah. and over and around Look at that. and they come out perfectly they are they don't get as stained as fast 
While I'm finishing up the pumpkin pie, my mom's gonna do just a few dishes so that we can have an empty sink and kind of regroup while we start on the next ingredient or next recipes. Yeah, I need the sink to handle the turkey and I don't like to get turkey juice yeah. anywhere, so I have to start fresh. Wait, I need to make sure I'm following this recipe. You need what? I said I need to make sure I'm following the recipe, not doing it from memory. This pumpkin pie recipe is pretty similar to the Libby's pumpkin pie recipe, but there's a couple differences. One main difference here is that instead of using a can of evaporated milk, I'm using heavy cream, and then instead of using white sugar, I'm using brown sugar, and that just kind of richens up the pumpkin pie a little bit more. And normally I would use pumpkin pie spice, but my mom was all out of pumpkin pie spice. So I'm using all the different spices that make up pumpkin pie spice to make this recipe. So once we have all the ingredients in there, the eggs, the sugar, the pumpkin, the heavy cream, we are gonna whisk this together and then we can pour this into our pie crust. Pumpkin pie, I think is one of the easiest pies to make. Oh, it looks like I forgot nutmeg. My mom is taking the turkey out of its packaging, the one that we're gonna brine, but I wanna get the pies in the oven so these can bake while we kind of move on to the next step. So one of these pumpkins is a little bit thinner than the other one, so it's not gonna bake as long. It's a little bit smaller of a pie. Is it the top oven, Mom, or the bottom one that you have preheated for you the... Can tell, you can see it says, yeah, that's the top. Top one, okay. So we need to set the timer for 15 minutes, and then we're gonna reduce the temperature. I'm working on the turkey brine. The turkey's in the pot that I'm going to brine it in, and I checked, and that fits in my outdoor refrigerator. But you can't put the hot brine on a cool turkey, because this was boiling a few minutes ago. So the brine has to cover the turkey. So I have to have this much brine. So I'm adding ice to cool it off quickly, because I really wanted to get it 24 hours. And I have to start the turkey Oh, it's in the oven at 8.45 tomorrow morning. So we're not quite gonna get 24 hours. Close enough. So while she's doing that, I'm gonna get going on this complicated pecan pie. I reread the recipe a few times and I think I finally understand how exactly we're supposed to do it. And I forgot to bring the whiskey. This is supposed to be a old fashioned in that it's supposed to taste like... I could see if my neighbor has some. What do you need, like a shot? I need two tablespoons, yeah, we need three tablespoons. So basically a quarter cup All right. of whiskey, rye whiskey. And then if she also has, um, what is it called? Bitters. It? Bitters. Does it all go in at the same? The bitters, no, some of it goes, some of the whiskey goes into the crust and some of the whiskey goes into the filling. Okay, and the, and the bitters goes in the... We only need 20 dashes or a, a half a teaspoon of bitters. Okay. I was supposed to bring that too, and I forgot. All right. So just so, 20 dashes of bitters and a quarter cup of whiskey. I'll go see okay. if they have some. So while my mom's doing that, I can actually get going on the crust. So it's not a pie, it is a tart. And my mom doesn't have a, pie, a tart, like a traditional tart pan. I don't have a traditional tart pan. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna use a cheesecake tart because, a cheesecake pan, because that way we didn't have to purchase any equipment. I think this might be one of our new favorite desserts. It turned out perfect. It's kind of like the best pumpkin, or not pumpkin, why do I keep saying pumpkin? Pecan pie. But it's, I think it's a little bit more elevated than that because a traditional pecan pie doesn't have that much pecan in it. And this one is loaded with pecan flavor from the crust to the filling, and it's fantastic. I do think, though, that this pie is a European recipe. My sister found it because the whole thing is in weight, 
and none of it was in cups or anything like that. My mom does not have a kitchen scale. So mom, if you're watching, cover your ears because you might be getting a kitchen scale for Christmas. And so I did have to do some guesstimating when it came to some of the measurements, but it still turned out beautiful and absolutely delicious, even with my guesstimating. The neighbor was not home, so we'll just go with water and that's okay. It'll be a pecan tart, no problem. I think it'll still taste really good. So I'm gonna put this in here and now we're going to add our water. So to this, we should have added two tablespoons of rye whiskey and two tablespoons of water, but we'll just end up adding four tablespoons of water. Okay, the brine is cool. As you can see, the ice hasn't all melted. Almost perfect. I'll just add some more water. Yeah. My mom is bringing the turkey to the refrigerator and we're gonna use this cheesecake tin instead of a tart pan. So this is actually really easy because you don't have to roll the crust out. You can just press it which makes it really easy. That's kind of skipping a step. I just reread the recipe. We were supposed to actually roll this out and put it into a tart pan after rolled out, but this worked just fine, just like this. So I'm gonna pop this into the refrigerator while we make the filling portion of this recipe. I think that this worked perfectly. Look how beautiful that is. My mom is getting ready to make the corn casserole right next to me, but I need to, before I can finish this tart, I need to chop up some of these candied nuts. Let me tell you how delicious these things are. They are so good. So we need to chop about half of them up. This was corn Becky bought at the farmer's market. And uh, I got to be over the day she processed it. Yeah, she helped it me. It was really fun. I think I'm gonna like this better than our traditional pecan pie because it's gonna have a lot more pecan flavor. It's gonna have it in the crust, in the filling, and decorated on top. So I'm just gonna use the same bowl that I made the crust in because why dirty another bowl? And we're gonna add butter to that. I think I have all the things I need out. We need to add some granulated sugar. And then we also need to add some, well, the recipe calls for golden syrup and we're not sure what golden syrup is. I think it's- Sounds like caro to me. Yeah, so we're gonna use corn syrup. I mean, I've Can made pumpkin it? pie before. Oh, I have an opener. Or I'm running under hot water. Hot it's water? probably just melted. Or, you know, salt, so solidified. Stuck. So this is just corn syrup and we need six ounces of this. A corn syrup is normally in a pumpkin, uh, pecan. pecan pie, so. I'm sure that's what it is. Mm, don't quite have enough, but I think we'll make it work. Oh, I might have more. I might have a second bottle. This is one of those things that only really comes out at the holidays. Yes, it's terrible for you. <laughs> I don't ever use it in anything else, but nope, I don't. We could add honey, I'm sure. I think we'll be okay. It'll just Close enough. It'll be barely under. Oh, well, it's all right because those nuts are covered in sugar too. Yeah, it's gonna be delicious. It'll be just fine. All right, for this corn souffle, I'm going to use some of the butter I melted to grease the pan. Is corn souffle something you guys normally have at your table? I see people when I watch their Thanksgiving videos, I see a lot of people make this and I have never had it before and I'm really excited about it. And this is really simple. It's just regular corn, a stick of butter, a box of Jiffy cornbread mix, a can of creamed corn, mix it all up, pour it in the pan. Don't you need eggs? I don't think so. I'll look oh, for really? more time. Wow. I don't think so. That is easy. Let me look one more time. This recipe calls for three eggs, which I've been making a ton of pies lately, and it seems like that's like the golden number for oh. eggs for a pie. Oh, sour cream, that's what oh. it needs. 
Eight ounces of sour cream. Which and is one cup. All right. And I've got a half cup here if you need a half cup. And I think I put the sour sure. cream back in the fridge. So now we're going to add some salt. I knew we needed sour cream for several things. I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, vanilla. And I think that's it. Because we're not adding the whiskey to this or the bitters. The cheese is added on after it's baked and then just you brown the cheese. But because we're doing it in advance, we will bake it and not put the cheese on until tomorrow when we uh, finish all the sides by warming them up. When we reheat it? Yes. Now I'm sure my grandma didn't make it with Jiffy Mix. I'm positive because I don't even think Jiffy Mix was around. So you could do a little research into the contents of Jiffy Mix, which is probably flour, cornmeal, baking powder, baking soda. Yeah. And just own. add that. So this crust has definitely firmed up a bit, which is perfect. Oh, that looks really good. Oh, perfect. Oh, does it smell good? Your garden corn, or what should I say? Uh, farmer's market Farmer's corn. market corn. It's so much. It it's smells so good. so good. Okay, that was perfect. I got that crust perfect. That looks perfect, Just Mom. Just the right size. Wow, that looks oh, so good. Oh, now we decorate it with the rest of them. Nope, we bake it halfway and then oh. we decorate oh, it. Oh, that would make sense. Otherwise, yeah. they'd get too brown. Yeah. Yeah. Here, I'll hand this to you. I think the bottom one is at 350. Yes. Oh, Whoa. you got it? I got it. Can you hand me the corn yeah. souffle as well? Yeah. Thank you. So the pecan pie or tart needs to bake for 20 minutes and then we will decorate it with... You the, set your timer Yeah. and I'll set my timer. Okay. 45. So Did you try one, Mom? Oh, I've had more than one. <laughs> broken piece. Oh. So better eat the broken ones. My mom is now crossing off the two okay. things we just put in the oven. And my sister just texted that her cheesecake fell in her oven and she wants to cry. Oh no. Yeah. See? Well, I think she could save it though. Oh yes, yeah. yes, Is it, she might. Yeah, it looks like she has a mat underneath of it. I think she could save it, but. Well, she wasn't man. gonna make two, so hopefully she still has one. You see, most of it is still in the, the um, cheesecake tin. Disappointing. Okay, so let's check on these. The, the pumpkin pies still have 17 minutes to cook. We've got all the vegetables, basically. I started the green beans, haven't finished those. We haven't started the carrots. We haven't started the Brussels sprouts. Should we kind of tidy up first, do you think? Since we've kind of got a lull here for a minute, because we've got so many things in the oven, we've taken some time to do some dishes. We're gonna re reset before we kind of move on to the next step. My mom on the stove got the broth going for the turkey, for the broth for the gravy. She's gonna grate some cheese and I'm just gonna keep kind of putting stuff away. I know we'll need some of these ingredients again, but sometimes it's nice just to give a little reset. So we need one cup of shredded cheddar cheese and one cup of Gruyere for two different recipes. So she's gonna get those grated up at the same time. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and set up a little station right next to my mom, and I'm gonna start shredding the... Mom, do you wanna use the food processor for the Brussels sprouts? Uh, yes, it would be a lot faster. I mean, okay. you still have to trim them and stuff, but... Yeah, I'll okay. do that. Uh, is I, it sticky? Yeah, probably, I'll wipe That's that. It's real sticky. All right, what else was I gonna get here? Came back in. Oh, would you get the food processor out? Yes, I'll just bring the bag back. Awesome, thank you. I'll get the mess I made cleaned up, which is corn syrup. So we should be able to make this entire recipe except for dressing it today. You Do you have any feta cheese? Separately. I don't think so. I say that would be really good in this. I don't think I do. Let's do a I test Brussels sprout to see. I have mozzarella. Oh, that's mine. That's for the pecan pie. It still has another 40 minutes, I think, or something like that. So now what we're supposed to do 
Here, I'll just set it down on top of these. That's a good idea. Well, just so I don't tip it. It's a little cattywampus. Oh, is it? Ah! Here, pick it up. There we go. Okay, perfect. I was going to do a test one running through here. I, I had a Brussels sprout. I carried it over here. I don't here. know what, yeah, looking for it. I got it right here. Oh. Okay, let's do a test one and see. Oh, yeah, that's going to be perfect. Yeah, you should just be able to put them right in there. If you watched where I had a friend's giving, I also made a Brussels sprout salad, but I did a creamy poppy seed dressing, and this dressing is going to be more of a Dijon apple cider vinaigrette type dressing, and both of them are so good. I am now obsessed with Brussels sprout salad, and I chopped the Brussels sprouts by hand when I made it last time, and I liked the texture that the food processor slices how thinly it slices the Brussels sprouts. This is going to be a winter salad on Josh and I's table because they're so good, so good. And the food processor makes it amazingly easy. I almost forgot that that one timer was not just for the pecan pies, but also the pumpkin pies. And those are done. They have a nice look at the brown color on that. They are a little jiggly, but they will be set once they cool. I got the cooling racks over here. Oh, look at this one. Oh, wow. <laughs> look at that. Beautiful. Puffed up. So this, I did add that extra egg yolk. Yes. So they're gonna be a little bit more decadent. Okay, so this oven, I think I turned off. We don't need it for anything else, All I don't right. think. One of our traditions now is we like to go to lunch with my dad when we do a big day like this. And so we want to get everything out of the oven before we can do that in cooling and have kind of like a, a lull moment. Another kitchen reset. Yeah, another kitchen <laughs> reset. Because then we'll come back and put all these other vegetable dishes in the oven. Yes. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Well, some of them we're not gonna roast till tomorrow. I don't think we're gonna do the, we'll just prep the salad, prep the carrots. We don't, oh, but we do need to roast or cook the green beans, right? Yes. Well. Okay. Are we gonna roast I'm the just, carrots today? That or was gonna... my plan. Oh. And then. Just reheat them tomorrow. Yes, make the cream sauce. So all we have to do is assemble it and heat it. Okay. Because I don't know what we're going to have for oven space with baking bread. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that well, was we'll my concern. we'll have to bake the bread first thing in the morning. Yes. Well, we might want to put this on, aren't you supposed to put the cheese on the corn soup? after it's half baked? At 45 minutes, you put it on, and then you do it for 10 more minutes or 15 more minutes. So we'll put that on tomorrow. Before we reheat it? Yes, because it oh, will be 45 minutes now. I'll get it out in the morning to get to room temperature. And then at whatever time I have on my list. Perfect. I'll put it in with the cheese on it. One more thing done. So now I'm gonna grate the Gruyere cheese. So my dad helps with the cleanup. And so that's one reason we like to go to lunch too, is kind of a get the energy to clean up the kitchen. A nice thing about prepping the food the day before is tomorrow there's gonna be a lot of dishes because there's 20 people gonna be here and there's get gonna be serving dishes. Be yeah. And so by prepping the food today, we can get a lot of dishes clean. All and, the pots and pans yeah. used to make everything will have been done today. And then the floor will get freshly mopped tonight or tomorrow morning um, by Mark. Yeah, he does kind of the cleanup. And usually after a big party like this, the son-in-laws are the ones that usually step in and do the majority of the washing of the serving platters and getting the dishwasher going. So it's good if we have the dishwasher empty before we eat dinner so that we can just, after dinner, People relax and then can just get the dishes clean. And then we'll do the tree pies. Well, not everyone's going to stay for the Christmas tree. Oh, yeah, obviously. that's true. So we'll probably have to do pies earlier. Okay, cheese is done. So I can cut the mushrooms for the green beans now. Did you read the recipe? It says you just have to rough cut them because you're going to stick blend it, the sauce. Oh. I did not see that. So that way, people who don't like mushrooms, yeah. they, won't they, even they want the texture. You won't have the texture of them. The recipe actually for this calls for dried mushrooms, but we figured we could just use fresh. 
and saute them. I do need to read the recipe before I actually get, go to the stove to cook this. This is faster than I can actually put them in the hole. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really happy with that. I reread the green bean casserole recipe and we aren't going to follow it exactly. We're going to use it as inspiration. So I'm gonna put the same amount, like measurements, but I'm gonna change it up a little bit. So we got three tablespoons of butter in our skillet. Now I'm just using the same one we used for the stuffing. And I'm gonna get our mushrooms in there and saute in those with salt. Salt helps kind of draw out the moisture of the mushrooms and they cook a little bit faster. Something new that we have never done before is we are making our own fried onions to go on top of the green bean casserole. So this is definitely, feels intimidating to me. Have you ever fried onions before? No. I mean, I, I fried onions, but not to make them look like French's French, French onion. fried onions in a can. So we are actually using shallots. So I have four shallots here that I have taken the skins off and I'm just slicing these. So I thought this would be a good thing to do while our onions are sauteing and cooking. What are you working on, Mom? I am doing the Thanksgiving slaw. I am chopping the parsley and I'll mix up the dressing so we'll dress it tomorrow. Well, that's a good idea. These shallots are strong. So we actually have to even make a little flour dredge for them. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Should be pretty easy. So we're gonna add a little flour. For the flour dredge, I'm gonna add some salt and pepper to just some plain all-purpose flour. I'll get that mixed up and that's the flour mixture we are going to dredge our shallots with. And then in this bowl, I'm just adding some sweetened dried cranberries to the coleslaw. And then once I get the flour mixed up with the pepper and salt, then we will go ahead and finish up our white sauce for our green bean casserole. This green bean casserole is phenomenal. So normally, green bean casserole, you'd use cream of mushroom soup. And right here, I'm just making a homemade version of cream of mushroom soup with the mushrooms and butter and flour. Then we're gonna add some cream to it and let that thicken up because we're using cream, not milk. It thickens very quickly. But the Gruyere cheese brings this green bean casserole over the top in decadence and deliciousness, along with the homemade fried onions. Friend, homemade fried onions are so delicious. Our cream soup base basically is done. This is basically cream of mushroom and you can see how easy that is to make. I'm gonna go ahead and what's gonna bring this over the top is add our one cup of Gruyere cheese. My mom's working on making the salad dressing now and we did go ahead and take out of the oven the corn souffle and the pecan tart. So we're gonna let these cool and then we'll rewarm this tomorrow when we put the cheese on the top. This can cool and then we can take it out of the cheesecake pan. We're just gonna mix this cheese into our cream sauce mixture. Because we had our quickly blanched green beans that came together really easily, we're just gonna add those into here and mix this all together. And then once we get this into our baking dish, we'll rinse this pan out and we'll fry our shallots right into this pan. Mom, I just bought Julia Child's cookbook, uh -huh. The Art of French, French Cooking, uh -huh. and this, green bean casserole looks yes. like something that would be in her book. There's a lot of Gruyere cheese used in it, a lot of cream used in it, a lot of butter. Right. And this just looks like the way that this is made looks like something that would be in the book. I've been reading it and I want to make a couple whole dinners around her book. I think that'd be kind of fun. It made it really easy. I went and found the dish that says green bean casserole.
We are done with the ovens for a while, so I'm gonna go ahead and get them turned off. We will need to bake a couple more things, but we'll do that after lunch. My mom, though, is gonna go ahead and get the salad dressing done while I get the pan clean so that we can fry the French onions. So we should probably text Dad and give him a heads, a up. heads up as to when we're gonna be ready, because when this is done and the onions are done, then we're gonna go. We're go because then we can bake the last when we come okay. back. So I'll text him probably what, like 15 minutes. Yeah, that's all probably all it will take. I'm going to make this salad dressing and this is a trick that works well for our family. No one really likes raw onions. So if you're gonna use, when I use raw onions in a salad dressing or a salad or, or a salsa or something like that, I chop them fine so no one gets a big bite of a raw onion and then I rinse it under cold water and it takes a bit of that raw onion bite out of it. Yeah. It makes it that sometimes they don't even notice. So this salad dressing calls for the, the chopped uh, red onion. We're using shallots because that's what we had. Then a third of a cup of vegetable oil. I think you're using an olive oil, so you could probably use yes. whatever you have on hand. I'm gonna oh, take that's this. True. Yes, I generally don't have any, quote, vegetable oil. And cider vinegar, quarter of a cup. Salt. Pepper. Dijon mustard. And I'm just gonna give it a squirt. It says four teaspoons. One, whoops, that was pretty watery. One, two, three, four. And two tablespoons of maple syrup. One, two. And I'm gonna put this in a uh, Pyrex that doesn't seal completely, so I can't just shake this up. Ask me how I know. <laughs> It'll spray all over the room. But I can put it in there and then I can whisk it tomorrow when I toss it on here. And I'm even going to do this. Yeah. So it's ready. Everything for this salad is in this bowl. One more thing to cross off the list. Yes. So I'm waiting for my oil to heat up so we can fry some of these onions. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting, I'm just gonna get some of these onions into our flour mixture. Now, I've never done anything like this before, so. We'll see how it goes. I think the key is not to burn it. It'll taste good probably regardless, as long as you don't burn it. And then I have a towel out, or I've got a plate out with a paper towel here, so when they're done frying, I can just get them on there. So I just tested, and I think the oil is ready. Have you ever done anything like this? I have not. I generally don't fry a lot of stuff. Okay, I probably don't want to overcrowd it, I don't think. I think this first round of onions is done, so we're gonna get these out of here. Like, oh, burning the paper towel. Okay, that doesn't work. They no. smell good. They smell just like French's from a can. They smell so good. Wow. It was good? Yeah, they're worth it. Worth the effort? Yes, I'd say so. These are delicious. We just got back from an absolutely delicious lunch with my dad, he's on his way back. And what my mom and I have been deciding or trying to decide now that we're back because everything is off, we need to clean, but we're trying to decide if we should roast the carrots and cook the green beans today and then reheat them tomorrow or if we should just prep everything. We already got the green beans done because we're gonna have to reheat it anyway. Well, this is my thinking. I'd rather just have to warm it okay. because we're eating three or four hours earlier than usual and the more that's in the oven, the longer it takes. That's true. Um, 
and it, it won't have as long to get to room temperature before it goes in the oven That's true. from the outside refrigerator. Uh, because, I mean, I get up early and I'll get up early and take it out, but I- That makes sense. That, yeah, the goal is to get it all done at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the plan. So what we need to do is preheat the oven then to 350. I'll do that. For the green beans. And then we need to preheat one oven for 425 for the honey chili chipotle carrots with a cream cheese sauce. So I can go ahead and prep the onions for the carrots. Did you say 425? Yeah, 425 for the carrots and 350 for the green beans. All right. And we're not going to put these fried onions on the green beans until <laughs> tomorrow. But I can peel, wash, and dice. Oh, the peeler. It's probably it in the dishwasher because we... You did it for potatoes. This recipe for the carrots looks so good. We found it, or I saw it on Instagram. This oil. Oh, it smells, it smells good. Smells like onion smell. Yeah. I mean, I'm just scraping it away. Oh yeah. And it smells really good. My mom is pouring that into a container that she's going to throw away. Do you think I should do all these carrots? Uh, a good number of them. Okay. Like I almost think we should have had more green beans. I had the giblets out of one turkey and the fresh herbs simmering and it's uh, smelling wonderful. I'm going to strain it and refrigerate it, and then we'll use this to make the gravy. It's a great idea. And I am on my last carrot, and then we can get these washed, get these sliced, and get these roasting. So the way that this recipe works is we're going to roast them with the spices, and then halfway, or when they're almost done cooking, then we are going to put a butter honey glaze on the top, and then we put these on top of cheese sauce, and then we'll sprinkle it with nuts at the very end. But first, we need to get them washed. So I have a new cutting board and a new knife, and we'll just get these chopped here. Okay, so I think I've got all the ingredients out we need for this dish. I'm gonna put the carrots on two different baking sheets because I wanna make sure they have enough surface area so that they roast really well. And then we're gonna season these up and roast these in the oven. I'm gonna eyeball all the ingredients. The recipe does have measured out ingredients, but we're just gonna measure these spices with our hearts. We've got oil. This is the roasted garlic, which we just bought more of this. We need this, right? Yes, we just one of them though. Okay. Some roasted onion. Chipotle, this is what's gonna bring this over the top. That's really hot, by the is way. Is it? Okay. Yes. We'll go gentle on that. Smoked paprika, and this stuff is incredible. We just purchased this when we went shopping together. Did you see the lid for the? It should be over there somewhere. Oh, underneath the box. You see it? Yes, underneath the box. Pepper. And we're gonna mix all these ingredients together. We figured out how we're gonna do this. What we're gonna do is the recipe says these need to bake for 20 minutes first, and then we're gonna put the honey butter glaze on it, and they need to then bake for another 10 minutes. Is this the one that 425? The bottom one. Okay. So what we're gonna do today is we're just going to do the first roasting of 20 minutes and then tomorrow we will finish baking them after we put the honey butter glaze on top so we're going to reheat them and finish the baking process tomorrow for the honey butter glaze it's super easy all it is is a few tablespoons of butter and a few tablespoons of honey so we'll melt this tomorrow and put this on right when we put them back in the oven so there's the glaze, but we also need to make the cheese part for the carrots. We need whipped cream cheese, and we figured we could just whip it ourselves. So I've got some cream cheese here that's at room temperature. And then, Mom, we need to get your, your onions for this as well. I'm going to add just a little bit more of the roasted garlic. 
My mom's going to wash and chop the chives while I get the, oop, meant to lock it, while I get this whipped. It's not, it's not down. It's not down? No, this isn't down, the bowl's not down. There's a, it's like not in place. I don't know what's there. So, oh, oh it's maybe sitting, that's it. There we go. Oh, they say it's not level, <laughs> something's wrong. There we go. Okay, we're gonna whip this. Our cream cheese is nice and whipped. My mom got all of the onions washed and separated. I think the way we're gonna do this is just take some scissors and fold these chives into the cream cheese. Then I've got the baking dish out that says carrots. So I'm just gonna fold the cream cheese in with the chives. I think what's gonna happen is the heat from the really hot carrots is gonna kind of melt this cream cheese a little bit. It'll be delicious. So what I'm gonna do is wrap this, put this in the fridge, and then this will be ready to top our carrots with when those come out of the oven. The last thing we need to prep for today, really, I think, right, is the, I believe so. the bread. So this is a no-need bread recipe, so it's super easy to throw together. I've got, I'm doubling the recipe, and it's gonna sit a little longer than I usually let it sit. So what I did is I put cold water in here just so that it'll even slow down the process. So three cups of water, cold, because it's gonna be probably, right now it is three o'clock, and I'll probably shape this tomorrow around eight. All right. Something like that. So it's going a little longer than normally it does. So we've got one teaspoon of yeast going in there. And then I like to add the flour after I add the water and yeast. I don't know if it really matters, but I've heard the rumor that, mom, do you have a one cup measure? They're probably all used, let me get you one. We've used a lot of dishes today. That salt can inhibit yeast, so I never like to add the salt if I can help it directly into with the yeast and water. And I also heard that there's something significant about the time you put oil in. Oh, I don't because know. Because then the yeast will all be in a glob oh. contained in the oil. Yes, I have I will say I one time made something I remember what it was, but I think there you was told me actually. There was butter and I put the water, the yeah. butter, and the butter was obviously floating on the top. And then my bread didn't rise because when I put the sprinkled the yeast it was on the butter. So we need six cups of flour. So that was one, two, three four, five, six. And this bread right here is what we are going to attempt to have it turn out into the shape of a turkey. It looks pretty easy. It does. It's to just- To make the turkey, but I don't know if it's gonna fit inside the- uh, Dutch oven. Dutch oven very well. Or is it gonna- Maybe it will be a, a squatty turkey. <laughs> you know, condensed. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes when the bread actually bakes, it it kind of changes. Yes, it does. Shape I mean, you, a little bit. You clip it a little bit, then it really changes. Yeah. So the kitchen is almost all clean. While I've been kind of puttering around getting the rest of the last of the recipes done, my mom's gotten the dishwasher fully loaded and the dishes almost all washed. So you don't need to knead this bread. You just need it to kind of come together in a ball, and that's all we're going to do. What we're going to do is we're going to let time and water create the gluten we need. For today, all of the cooking really has been done other than getting those carrots out of the oven when they are par cooked. So we can get the majority, well, we can get all the recipes off the cupboard doors. And then my mom is gonna sit down and go through her timeline and just double check that we were able to get everything done. She already has a rough timeline what tomorrow's gonna look like for when things need to go in the oven. But sometimes once we do this big cooking day, some things get done, some things don't. I think we got everything off our list done that we wanted to. So is there anything we didn't get done? Well, let's check. Pie crust, brine the turkey, mash the potatoes, 
make the dressing green beans. We'll finish that tomorrow. Corn is done except warm up. But Carrots we're working on. Gravy, I have the broth done. Slaw is done. Pies and tarts are done. Awesome. I would say. We did it. We did it. I am going to cover the bread so that it can sit and rise overnight and then tomorrow we can shape it into our turkeys. My mom is also going to line a little dish with some paper towels and we're going to get the french fried onions in there and then once our green beans are ready for them tomorrow we will top our green beans with them. The kitchen is almost completely put back together. My mom's going to clean the counters. I'm going to go ahead and get the dishwasher started because I don't think we're going to get any more dishes. No, it's full. My mom is... I'm the queen yeah. of one more dish. In the dishwasher. <laughs> I think it's full. Where's your dishwasher? Oh, they're over here. They, uh, it's a uh, top drawer. Top drawer, okay. In here. Ooh, I have more. Less. I know I have more in the, sh in the laundry room. Okay. Well, we'll get the dishwasher going. My dad will sweep and mop tonight, probably. He usually is the one that does the floors. These are all clean so we can get these put away. I'll try to leave it as clean as possible. I don't know where all this stuff goes though. Okay, the um, colander just goes in the stackables. The oh, okay. Mix, the stick mixer goes in the, that covered in the shoe box. Ooh, the look at that. The carrots came out of the oven as well. They are par cooked. So we'll let them cool completely and then they will get put in the refrigerator. Can you tell, are both of them heating up? Oh, I'll go look. So my mom wants to cook the turkeys in her roaster pans. She has two roasters. Well, she borrowed one. One is some, a family friend's and one is hers. And she wants to actually cook them in her laundry room because it's gonna take up too much space in the counter. And there's gonna be so many people here tomorrow. She doesn't really want two big roasters taking up this whole end of her counter. So she's checking tonight to make sure that it's not gonna blow a fuse or anything by having two roasters on the same plug, which I think is smart. Yes, they both are hot. I just didn't want to have that happen and not know that and come in and have stone cold turkey. Yeah, that, would... that does not help us get everything done at the same time. Yeah. So as soon as I get this kitchen kind of tidied back up for my mom, then I'm going to head home and I will be back early in the morning. My mom's probably going to sit down. I'm going to grab the stack of recipes and my countdown clock and fine tune it and add the bread that I didn't have in the beginning. So, so I need to add those to when I can get them in the oven and out of the oven in time to put the sides in. So this the, eating at 1230 is like really early. <laughs> Really early. If you are interested in the timeline, so my, my, what my mom does after we do a day like this is she sits down and she comes up with a timeline knowing how long each thing needs to heat or cook in the oven. And it's what helps get everything out and hot at the same time. Because that's the biggest, trickiest thing can be, how do you know to get everything out hot at the same time? So a little synapsis, she starts is that we want to eat at 12.30 and then she's going to, for every recipe, count backwards from 11.30 when it needs to go into the oven or when she needs to turn the roaster on. For example, she knows the turkey's gonna take five hours. Uh, I think about four and a half. They're small, they're only 12 pounds. So she'll take that, plus you need to count the rest time. Half an hour. So she's gonna and take 11 minutes to carve it. <laughs> there you go. So she's gonna add all that up and she's gonna work backwards and then she's gonna write that down. My mom and I did create a hosting course that goes into very much detail exactly how that whole thing works. We will show you tomorrow. If you want to look into the course and get like a deep dive into hosting, deep dive into having a stress-free party from planning the menu, going shopping, and actually doing all the yeah, invitations and cooking all the food and the timeline, that will be linked down below. But we will go and show you tomorrow how we're gonna work through this so that you can see if you're interested in that. But if you want a deep dive course, my mom and I have created a course and we can link that down for you down below. It's a five episode course video where my mom and I sit down and go through each step. Plus there's a companion guide that goes with it and a lot of printables to help you have a stress-free party. I think you'll really like it. Over the years, lots of people have asked me, how do I do these big parties? Well, this is how I do it. And so I, I think if you want to do that kind of thing, or you want to be able to just have people in your home and feed them, 
stress-free, it would be very beneficial to you. And probably one of the most significant things is when I take the timeline, I set my phone alarm to every one of those times that I have to do something so that I can engage in my guests and not be trying to keep it all in my head. Oh, five more minutes, I have to do this. Yeah. 10 more minutes, I have to do that. Just when it dings, then I go to the, the chart on the wall and say, oh, it's time to take yeah. this in. It's time to take that out. So if you wanna know how to create your own timeline for your recipes mm -hmm. and your family, that is what the course will help you do, kind of create your own timeline. But we'll show you exactly what that looks like tomorrow. So tonight, we are gonna call it a night. We were able to accomplish all 11 of those recipes, which was pretty incredible. So friend, if you wanna see how all of this is gonna to come together, we will be, I will be back. My mom will text me probably after she sits down and does her timeline. She will text me and let oh. me know what time I should be here in the morning. I'll we'll probably even send her a picture of it in <laughs> case she needs to check it and make sure I didn't forget something. And we will pick this back up right where we left off. So if you wanna watch more videos between now and when I upload the next one, I can pop a couple other videos here of my mom and I cooking. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And we can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend. Bye-bye.